Hey guys, David here and welcome to part 3 of building the Radwick Killer Bee. In part 1 we built this awesome, super flat and sturdy table and then in part 2 we assembled the base of the frame with all the linear rails and everything. Now you were able to see how I assembled uh, all the lead screws uh, on the three axes. And there was also a surprise bit of uh, machining in there, which is definitely not in the instructions for the Radwick Killer Bee. At this point I also want to give a big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They make super high quality PCBs at a very affordable price and have their fourth PCB design contest going on. You can design your own PCB, submit it there and win one of many amazing prizes. So no matter your experience level in PCB design, if you're interested at all, make sure to go check out PCBWay.com to find out more. Now let me explain a little bit why I decided to go ahead and machine my own custom X motor mount bracket. The motors that you can configure uh, the Radrick Killer Bee with uh, are NEMA 24 uh, stepper motors and the stock motors are probably perfectly fine for this machine but I decided to go ahead and uh, go for one with a slightly uh, more powerful uh, model and uh, two I also went with closed loop stepper motors. This should give me uh, definitely a lot of power uh, on the motors uh, which just gives me the confidence that they're not uh, gonna lose any steps. What this also means though that my motors are almost twice as long as uh, the standard motors. And on the y-axis this doesn't really matter, just means that it's slightly longer and that makes my table uh, slightly wider, which I don't really care that much about. But on the x-axis, uh, even in the stock configuration, the motor already sticks out quite a bit and is kind of the limiting uh, factor of how small the table can be. And with uh, an even longer motor, that just meant that the table would have to be quite deep with a lot of wasted space in the back. And since this table already sticks out into the room quite a bit, I really did not want that. So I decided to uh, flip the motor 180 degrees and use a belt instead of a direct uh, coupling uh, to mount this motor. Now this of course meant that I had to uh, mill an adapter plate, uh, but if you don't got, uh, guys don't have a CNC then, uh, well, first of all you don't have to do this modification, and second of all if you really do want that you can build the machine stock first, get it all set up, mill that bracket and then uh, move your CNC later uh, to uh, have the extra space savings. What I used here uh, is just some 8mm aluminum uh, plate, uh, fairly standard, it doesn't really uh, matter uh, how thick that is, uh, since it doesn't carry that much load, as long as it can hold the motor sturdily and keep the belt tensioned, uh, it's perfectly fine. I'm also using the already existing uh, mounting holes uh, that connect the gancho plate to the beam here on the x-axis and I just uh, used some slightly longer bolts and uh, sandwiched everything together. This means I didn't have to drill any extra holes and it looks very clean. I'm also very pleasantly surprised how uh, well my custom machine uh, part blends in. I tried to match the little uh, uh, chamfer here on the corner and uh, it surprisingly uh, worked out beautifully and lined up. Uh, I mean, it did use the 3D model of this machine which is available for download to base my design off of, but I still had some doubts uh, if it really would line up in the end. The only thing that it doesn't quite line up uh, are the extra two holes that I added uh, that would use uh, the motor mounting holes instead of uh, the other holes. But uh, might have not measured that properly enough uh, and my holes also don't have any slop in them. Uh, so uh, it's not off by a lot, it's maybe off by 0.2 millimeters or something like that. So next time I'll just uh, make my holes slightly larger and then something like that would not be an issue at all. But it really does not need those holes. It was uh, more just like, well, they're already there, so my, I might as well use them. But uh, it's perfectly sturdy with the four bolts that it has already. Now the next step will be preparing the bed of the machine where the spoil board is going to go. And this is one of the places where I was going to make a slight modification as well to the machine. Uh, by stock, uh, there are just uh, three beams uh, going the length uh, with the spoil board sitting on top. Uh, but these rails here are left floating. Now, just kind of seeing this, feeling it here, uh, this is probably perfectly fine. I'll throw a dial indicator on it uh, later to see how much flex there is in there. But I was going to uh, add some extra uh, supports under here and uh, increase uh, the, the three uh, rails here to four. Uh, but it looks like uh, those uh, did not ship, or maybe they shipped as 2020 instead of 2040 extrusions. I, 
have not checked yet, but I could not find any extra uh, 2040 extrusions. So upon contacting Rudrick, uh, they quickly sent out the wrongly delivered extrusions uh, and uh, corrected it with the right ones. Uh, that didn't take very long at all. So I now went ahead and installed the three extra uh, extrusions that I ordered for down here. Uh, the reason why I'm adding those is, uh, as you can see, uh, there is a lot of flex in this uh, Y beam. And uh, the force that I'm applying here uh, by hand uh, is roughly what uh, the gantry uh, weighs uh, plus like the cutting forces. And uh, the deflection here in the middle of the Y beam uh, is almost half a millimeter, which uh, going back to the wood sign cutting uh, analogy again, if you're just trying to cut wood signs, then that's fine. But I'm trying to uh, have this machine to be as precise as possible and half a millimeter of flex in the Y uh, beams is not acceptable at all. So I'm uh, fully supporting them. Uh, that means that it's going to be able to rest on the table the entire way, uh, plus has more meat anyhow. Uh, this is going to make it a lot stronger and remove most of the flex. And I uh, also just added a, a second uh, in between uh, rail here so that the bed has more to volts down to. That's just going to make it a bit stronger, but not really as necessary as uh, these extra rails here. As you were able to see, we have now uh, basically everything mounted. Uh, all the drag chains are mounted, the base of the table is done, and even the spindle is already solidly on the machine. I'm actually really happy with the amount of progress I was able to make. Uh, this hasn't really taken me all that long at all. Uh, I was really expecting this to take way longer. And I have not assembled the spoil board yet, and that's because the T-slot that I ordered that will be uh, integrated into the spoil board has not arrived yet. So I will uh, do that once that arrives, but I can easily finish the rest of the machine off without that done. Now these uh, cross members here on the bottom, they were a very tight fit, but I have to say, I do have to give credit to Rudrick for uh, cutting these aluminum extrusions. Um, the way that uh, this is assembled, uh, they have to be basically spot on. Uh, there's not really any room for tolerance. If they're too short, then they will be loose and might uh, pull the frame out of whack and if they're too long, uh, they won't fit in. But uh, some of them are a bit tight, uh, but they still fit in and uh, everything went together. So uh, the accuracy of the length of the aluminum extrusion is very good. And certainly within like half a millimeter of their uh, supposed length. Now this uh, Z-plate here is uh, definitely not necessarily meant for a quite as large of a spindle. Uh, the stock uh, machine has uh, support for like a round router style uh, spindle and there are various uh, sizes available uh, to clamp the spindle. Uh, but I was able to use some uh, 2020 uh, corner uh, brackets uh, to mount the spindle directly uh, to the C plate uh, without any extra adapter plates in between. Uh, since that would just push it out even further and with a machine like that it is very important to keep your spindle as close to the beam as possible. Now I of course have not trimmed in the spindle yet at all, so I will have to go back and loosen some of these uh, bolts to make sure that it is perfectly perpendicular to the bed. But I'll do that once uh, the bed is in and I've uh, leveled the bed and all of that good stuff. And then I'll uh, go around and calibrate everything to uh, align perfectly. And with uh, this uh, we are at the end of the manual basically for 
what Rhetoric provides. Uh, they do have some wiring diagrams if you use one of their two provided options. Uh, one of them is a Duet Wi-Fi, which is basically a 3D printer board. And the other one is uh, kind of uh, something with black box in the name, which is meant for a CNC, but it's definitely also more like a, a durable thing. So I will not be using one of them. I will be using uh, Mach 3, uh, which is a proper CNC uh, controller software. Uh, so that will uh, come in a future part where I do all the electronics wiring and uh, show you how I set up Mark III. I also still have to uh, build the enclosure around this, of course, uh, to just kind of keep the dust and the noise uh, inside and uh, make this uh, machine an uh, enclosed unit. I'm really loving the enclosure on my other CNC, so uh, it was a no-brainer to build an enclosure around this one as well. If you're enjoying the series so far, make sure to leave a like down below. Also, leave a comment if you have any questions, suggestions, anything like that. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the future parts. And with that, thanks for watching and until next week.